Hi, hello again. I imagine it's 1145, so probably some of you have stomachs growling here, so I'll try to work through this quickly. Um, uh, there's a lot of stuff that we could discuss with regard to the union stuff that we're working on. Uh, just for example, this morning I was talking with the AFT uh, director of uh, national higher ed, and one of the things we're talking about is an interesting concept we're interested in called the idea of one tier of trying to move and create uh, some, um, some moving towards a path which doesn't focus on simply 75% of classes being taught by full-time faculty, 25% being taught by part-time faculty, but trying to create a space where ultimately we move away from the idea of 75 to the idea of 100 zero. And so that's kind of exciting stuff. We'll probably be talking about a little bit more in uh, the months, weeks, and years to come, because it's obviously a long-term thing. And we're gonna be having a pretty momentous meeting on that, that's gonna be happening actually this Friday. But anyway, let me go ahead and get in. There's been a number of things that have happened. Uh, we just had $200 million ongoing put in to a state part-time healthcare fund. There was actually a fund that had existed in early 90s, but had so little money in it that it just there couldn't be anything done with it. So what we have to do is we, we had to sit down and go through and negotiate this. And the way it's set up is that the district would have to pay out money for health insurance and that, you know, they'd have limited funds. So what they did is they set up the statewide fund and said, OK, we're going to pay for all of the district's health care, provided they provide for any adjunct working in the district, the same health care that their full time faculty get. And in addition to that, basically make available a multi-district plan. So I'm just going to go ahead and read through this point. Health insurance, comprehensive uh, health care coverage, including vision, dental, and chiropractic care. By the way, I should indicate to you that the San Diego Community College District and now the Grossmont Community College District have the best health care plans for adjunct faculty in the state of California. And in fact, I would argue that probably in many respects have better healthcare plans than you could probably get if you were adjunct faculty at the CSUs or the UCs. But uh, anyway, I can go on. It's basically you have to have an average FTE of 40% uh, or higher over two semesters. If you don't know what FTE is, you know, a lot of people are getting hit with acronyms. What it means is full-time equivalent load. So usually uh, 15 credits would be, um, you know, 100%. So if you're teaching basically, what would it be, six units a semester or an average of six units a semester, that would basically cover it. Now, when I said, I noticed I said average. Let's say you're teaching 10 one semester, okay, and then you're teaching basically for the next semester, all right? You've dropped below that 40%, but the average still remains there. So they have that. And for new people coming in, if you can keep over that 40% average over two semesters, then in the third semester, it kicks in. Um, the thing that's important to keep in mind about that, though, is even though you qualify, you have to talk to benefits to get it set up. They're not going to come and do it for you. I had no less than six or seven faculty that uh, are teaching at Southwestern Community College, who also taught in this district. And, you know, I talked to them about health insurance and they didn't even know that they could apply because they weren't paying attention to the information that was coming out. And this was back in the 50 50 days. So, what I'm going to ask you is, I would also like every adjunct in the room here or part time faculty, whatever term you use, Consider yourself as a resource to inform people, hey, this is what's out here, this is what's available. And it's more than just basically this 40% uh, in higher in two districts. There's also, we have now basically a multi-district plan that's being set up so that if you're teaching, say, 20% in one district and 20% in another, and we run into a lot of people in world languages, you get that one five-unit class in one district, you get that one five-unit class in another district, and then you're kind of left out of it. We try to take care of that, and what happens is now, if you're in one of these districts that's participating in this plan, you can go ahead and basically say, hey, you know, uh, I also teach over here. You provide the paperwork. And what happens is, say, you're teaching that 20% here, 20% there, 50% of that will be re uh, compensated or reimbursed from one district, 50% by another district, so they can get your health care covered. And by the way, 
This is not just health care for yourself. This includes dependent care. Notice what I said, dependent care, because after all, how effective can faculty actually be if they're only, if they're not able to take care of wives or husbands or people that they have to be caregivers or for dependents, all right? And this is something that I'm trying to get more information out. Um, right now in the San Diego area, we have San Diego, uh, Grossmont Cuyamaca, Southwestern College, and Palomar College are all connected into this plan. Um, Miracost is not, but here's the other thing. Let's say you're applying in this multi-district plan and part of that percentage comes from Miracosta. Guess what? You can still get 50% reimbursement from the district that's participating. So you can still get some. It's not the best deal, but that's one of the things that happens. All right, I talk about job security. Um, San Diego was actually one of the first uh, locals that actually got this going on, but basically rehire rights kick in after six semesters, uh, excluding summer and intercession, over six years of service within a specific discipline uh, within a particular college. Let me explain what that means. Sometimes you'll have somebody say, well, you know, I taught in the fall, but then I didn't teach in the spring. Well, I taught in the fall, but then I didn't teach in the spring. And if I don't have if I'm not able to teach continuously, I can never get at rehire rights. Well, we change that. So we make it so if you are teaching in these alternate semesters, or maybe you're off two semesters, but then you come back on over that six, if you finally manage to accumulate those six semesters with successful evaluations, then you can be guaranteed rehire rights with rela relation to the classes you have taught also dependent upon seniority. All right. And we like to do that because this is how we keep people. This is how we show that we value people. And I think in combination with that insurance and a combination with that job security, um, you know, makes better faculty because you can concentrate on your students. You don't have to worry about other concerns. Office hours, dependent upon load, an adjunct can receive pay up for uh, up to 33.5 hours uh, office hours per semester. Now, just to understand that, okay, if right now I think the uh, going rate here that they're paying here is $65 an hour, times that times 33.5, that's an extra $2,000 in your pocket for doing the work that you should be doing, for doing the work that many of you do already. Right? I do, I cannot tell you, I ran into this down at Southwest, we have a paid program down there. We found that, um, you know, when they sat down to set up the plan, that the majority of the faculty weren't applying, but still the majority of faculty were providing those hours. So I think, oh, well, it's not that important. It's only a few dollars here, $2,000 per semester. I mean, that's a lot of money, right? So, and what are we doing here? By doing that, we're increasing student completion. We're basically working towards the mission of the college. And then other things that I want to point out, adjuncts can receive pay for shared governance or shared governance committee related work. I'm an academic senator. And because of the work that I do through this, if you're curious about how much that is, it's like $1,200 a semester. All right, working as an academic center. And the thing that I'm going to also encourage people to keep in mind here, having adjunct academic senators is critical because a lot of times when you're dealing in a union, a union will concentrate on your working conditions, but there are curricular decisions that happen that can in fact impact or affect whether or not you have a class at all. All right, and this is something that I think a lot of people need to understand. The other thing is this, we gain more appreciation, respect, and continuity with our full-time faculty when we are involved in these other activities. In addition, I would also say that, and this is San Diego is probably, I believe, the first place in the state in which adjuncts are eligible for sabbatical leave. And we've actually had a few adjuncts that actually have managed to get that, which means you can be working a research project and you can be basically off. You can be set up with that basically your least time to do that extra work to help the college. Now, for more info, what I want to also uh, point out here is that you can reach me. My email is mixinminao at gmail.com. That might be a bit of a mouthful. The other way is just gjohnson at sdccd.edu. That's it. Thanks.